All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Uh, this is chapter eight, where we are talking about linear regression. You may have also heard this before as line of best fit. Okay, so uh, continuing on talking about scatter plots and um, and uh, those relationships. Okay, so here uh, we have an example. The scatter plot below uh, is looking at the fat content versus the protein content for 30 different items on the Burger King menu. Uh, so you will notice uh, down here, whoops, uh, the protein content is our uh, X variable, it's our um, explanatory variable, and the fat content is our Y variable, it is our uh, response variable. Okay, and we see a vaguely linear positive trend um, of moderate strength, right? Moderate strength. Uh, so uh, the correlation here in this example is 0.83. Um, there seems to be uh, a linear association between them, but that doesn't say what the linear association is. Um, it doesn't tell us uh, exactly uh, how much something is increasing by. The correlation just gives us sort of a measure of the strength of that association, but not what the actual association is doing. To do that, uh, we need to be able to create a linear model, uh, what is called a, a linear regression model. Okay. Um, and this helps us uh, to simplify uh, what is happening with the underlying patterns and relationships of this linear relationship. So the, the linear moder model is just uh, an equation of a straight line through the data, right? It's a slope intercept form equation, y equals mx plus b. Uh, the points in the scatter plot are not going to line up completely. Uh, but we can, based on the linear trend of the points, uh, we can use a straight line to summarize the pattern. Um, and that can help us understand how all of the values are associated. Uh, but before we talk about how to create that model, let's talk about a couple of things that are associated with that model. First of all, residuals. Um, a residual is essentially uh, the difference between the model and the actual value uh, because the model is not going to be perfect. It's not going to go through every point. Uh, some of those points are going to be above the line. Some of those points are going to be below the line. Um, and that estimate that's going to be in the middle is going to have uh, sort of an error associated with it. And that's, good. that's what we call the residual. Um, the residual... Uh, as you can see, <clears throat> excuse me, from down here, the formula, uh, the residual is the observed value minus the predicted value, meaning the point that I'm seeing on uh, the scatter plot minus the point given to me by the model, given to me by the line. So that is called a residual, the difference between them. Here's a nice visualization of uh, these residuals. So the points here are my observed values because those are the values that are um, coming from my data, right? They're being observed in real life. The red line is my model uh, and those are gonna be the predicted values. So again, it's observed minus predicted. So the residual here is observed this value uh, for the y minus the predicted value, this value for the y, okay? So a negative residual means that the predicted value is too big. This right here, since this number is smaller than the predicted number, uh, it's going to create a negative residual, and that means that it's being overestimated, right? This is where we predicted it would be, and this is where it ended up being. A positive uh, residual, on the other hand, means that we're underestimating it. Uh, this point right here would be an example of a positive residual because the difference between the observed value here is larger than that of the predicted value, so we underestimated it, right? Um, and so this is right here, that, that particular example, uh, 
the estimated fat for a BK broiler chicken sandwich is 36 grams. That's this one right here. And then the true value is only 25, so the residual is a negative 11 grams, okay? So residuals are the difference. Now, what the line of best fit means <clears throat> is that we're trying to reduce the residuals as much as possible. However, uh, since some residuals are positive and others are negative, on average, they end up canceling each other out. If you were to take all of these residuals and uh, take the sum of the positive ones and the sum of the negative ones, they're going to be pretty close to zero. Uh, and that's the point of the, the line of best fit is that we want to do that. Um, but adding them up, that makes it that makes it messy because of uh, the way that the positives and negatives cancel each other out. So what we do uh, is we do something similar that we did with the standard deviations and that's instead of adding them together, finding the sum of them, we take the square of the residuals and add the squares. The smaller the sum of those squares, the better the fit. So the line of best fit is the line for which the sum of the squared residuals is smallest. In other words, the least squares line. And I've got a little applet here, which you can download off of um, Wolfram Alpha that kind of shows this. So here we have a data set of one, two, three, four, five points, okay? Um, and you will see these squares associated with them. Now notice that as I move the slope, I can reduce the slope, see how the squares are being changed. The dotted black line is the residual. And if you were to square that, you end up with this area, right, a square. Um, so notice that as I change the slope, the residuals get larger and I make bigger and smaller squares, okay? Now the point of the best fit line, is, uh, the, the, excuse me, the least squares regression is that uh, as I'm moving this line around, I want to find the spot where the sum of these squares is the smallest I can possibly make it. So I'm just gonna hit this button because it does it for you. And we will do some calculator work where you will figure all of this out on the calculator. Uh, but this is what your calculator is doing. It's finding this line. This line right here has the smallest possible sum of squares for the data set. Uh, wow, for this one, okay. So here we've got th this line down here. My points are right there. Uh, notice that uh, I can make these smaller and I can probably get myself pretty close um, just by reducing these, but it's not a perfect line. Um, so doing it by hand, I can make it pretty small, but if I hit that, yeah, look, that is the best, the optimized uh, line that creates the smallest sum of squares. So this is what the least squares regression line is doing. It's finding the line that creates the smallest uh, squares that we get from the residuals. So, um, oops, let's go back to my slides. Here we go. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, the way that the calculations are made, uh, again, this goes back to what we talked about with our uh, scatter plots and finding correlation. Um, the We can take all of the data and we can um, convert it to z-scores. So notice that that's been done with the Burger King data over here. Um, Burger King on av the average uh, protein content should be about the average fat content too, which is this uh, point right here. And as we learned in the last chapter, that going one standard deviation on the x uh, means that we're going to go up our standard deviations on the y. Uh, that is our relationship there. So put generally, moving any number of standard deviations away from the mean in x moves us r, that is the correlation, times that number of standard deviations from the mean in y. So let's do a couple of quick examples. So a scatter plot of house, uh, house price in thousands of dollars 
versus house size in thousands of square feet for houses sold recently in Saratoga, New York, shows a relationship that is straight with only moderate scatter and no outliers. Uh, the correlation between house price and house size is 0.77. So uh, I go to an open house and I find that the house is one standard deviation above the mean in size. What would I guess about its price? Now remember this is uh, size price. And since I'm going one standard deviation to the right in size, that means I'm going R standard deviations up in price. So I would guess that since it's a standard deviation above in price, that it's 0.77 standard deviations above in, uh, excuse me, above in size, that it's 0.7 standard deviations above in size. Uh, so this relationship in z-scores gives us an idea of the increase in terms of the averages um, as being stated by the correlation. Another example here, um, we have the uh, same situation. We have a scatter plot uh, that is uh, size and price. And <clears throat> this says, I read about an ad for a house priced priced two standard deviations below the mean, what would I guess about its size? Um, so I know that we're going down two standard deviations, right? Um, so how, basically, how many uh, standard deviations to the left did I go? Well, um, if I've got down by two, uh, I've got negative two times whatever my correlation is, 0.77, and uh, that's going to mean that uh, I went negative uh, 1.54 standard deviations on the size. So down to uh, 1.54, that's going to be like right there-ish. Oops. Because um, I went down two standard deviations, <clears throat> which means I went to the left negative 1.54 standard deviations. Finally, <clears throat> And as a final example here, we have um, a friend tells you about a house whose size in square meters, uh, he's European, right? Uh, it's 1.5 standard deviations above the mean. Uh, what would you guess about its size in square feet? So notice in this case that we're talking about size in both cases. Um, and because we're talking about size, uh, the fact that we're just changing uh, the measurements, right? Between square meters and square feet means it doesn't really matter, right? Changing the units doesn't change what's gonna happen with the standard deviations. So this is still 1.5 standard deviations uh, in square feet because that's not going to change anything uh, if we're talking about size, right? Changing units doesn't change the, the average distance from the mean. All right, uh, that's everything we've got for this first video. Uh, in the next video, we will talk about um, how to make a least squares regression line um, and uh, how to do it on a calculator and <clears throat> how to make these things called residual plots. So we will see you in the next video.